this is working now. Um, for some reason, I pressed go live and it said it wasn't sending anything um, signal-wise. So, oh, whoops, I'm trying to get this in the right position. Hello again. So, hope everybody's having a good Sunday so far. Um, it's nice to see you, Mona and Tina and Chris and Ohm. I'm not sure what your actual first name is, but, um, or maybe that is your first name. Um, but I've seen you guys all here many different weeks and I'm glad that you're back. So, um, it seems to be working now and I am just going to play a tune for you. Um, a fiddle tune. I'm trying to think which one I want to do. Um, I will do Boys of Blue Hill for you today um, to get started. And then if anyone has any improvisational requests, we can do those. Um, and yeah, I guess, how was your week for us? Um, it was a pretty good week. I released an album on thir Wednesday night, I guess. Um, and it'll be on Spotify on the 4th of September on Friday the 4th, um, but right now it's on Bandcamp, and um, it's an improvisational album actually based on a lot of the shows that we have done here together. So I found the audio from some of the better performances of the improvisational pieces, and I kind of mixed them up, um, edited them and added some reverb and changed the tone a little bit and then put them on a live album and that was really fun. So um, that I did that this week. Um, and then this weekend, my friends, who I haven't seen since March in person, um, came and sat on our patio um, with masks on six feet apart. So I finally saw my friends for the first time in a very long time, and that was really cool. Um, but I felt like now that we know more, um, we are able to see people from a distance safely but still connect with people so that's really fun and crystal is her name i guess oh hi crystal um thanks so much for being here i'm gonna play boys of blue hill and then i have a few um singing songs for you today and the captioner erica is um i send those to her in advance so if you have any songs that you'd like to request for next week where i sing um this that's a good way to do it so okay so this is boys of blue hill and thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy the birds uh, behind me. We have a little bird feeder up there. And they've been eating like maniacs. Like they're eating, they're eating like a whole cup and a half a day. I don't know how they're, where they're putting it all. So anyways, that's what we're doing. Cool. And thank you, Bartek, for coming. Um, I am glad that things are looking up now. And I'm really glad that you're here. So, okay, I'm going to do Boys of Blue Hill. This is a traditional Irish fiddle tune.
traditional Irish tune um, that I really love to play. Um, that one I learned in college, I believe, but then many, many years later figured out how to loop it um, and has actually played it in Ireland, which is really fun because over there people actually know that tune, where in America I feel like it's a very small subset of the population that's familiar with traditional fiddle tunes and actually know their names and stuff. So. In Ireland, it felt like that was a pretty standard one, so that was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just thinking about what to chat with you guys about today. Um, besides the album release, I made kind of a big decision this week in that I think um, in November through the month of March, which is basically winter in Duluth, Minnesota, where it's very cold and snowy, I think I'm going to take time off of doing other shows. I'm still going to do this show because I just like checking in with you guys and it gives me an excuse to play and try new things and then just um, connect with people on a regular basis. So I'm going to keep doing these shows all year, but in the winter I'm going to take time off from other shows so that I really can write my book because I've been talking about it forever. But the you know this is a very interesting time in that everybody's learning this technology all together. And so the gigs that would normally be like, you drive up, you play a show, you leave, um, you know, are requiring a lot of planning and technical mishaps and all this stuff. And so I think um, in order to be able to focus on writing, um, I am going to um, take actually five months to just write. And hopefully while I'm working on the book, um, I will have song ideas. I had one yesterday in the bathtub, which is where all my song ideas happen. Um, and so I would like to work on music too, but really what I am, serious about doing is the um, the book. I really want to get that out into the world, and I think this winter is a good time. So the reason I was bringing that up is kind of thinking about the months ahead. Um, not every climate is as severe as Minnesota, I suppose, but I'm wondering what you all are planning to do to make the winter pass um, as like, you know, it's kind of like quarantine is not fun, and not everybody's even doing it, as uh, Chris pointed out. People are going out, um, you know, but I'm not doing that. And so I'm thinking, I'm trying to see this as an opportunity to really do something different with my year. Um, so not just trying to pretend that everything is normal or even that I need to do the same kind of work routine that I always did. So I think these shows are really awesome. And the Patreon has been really, really fun for me to connect with people over there. Um, send them messages and um, hopefully send them more and more material as I'm kind of getting this book out. I'm planning to send out snippets of the book. Um, but yeah, just kind of thinking like, what are you going to do this winter that makes this year um, ironically or kind of unusually unique? Um, I don't know if anyone is like really tackling cooking or sewing or painting or whatever it is. Um, but trying to think of ways to make this year, even though it's not for good reasons, um, a unique year where we can look back and be like, well, we made good use of that time. So that's what I'm trying to think of now. So, um, but thank you so much for being here, Kylie and um, Tina and Walter um, from Brazil. That's exciting to see you here. Um, so I'm gonna do a song that I don't usually play solo. So it might actually be bad, <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, um, but I want to try it because I think I know how to do it now um, with my looping pedal. It's called I See It Too. Um, I've never 
tried looping it, but you guys are my guinea pig audience. So um, that is what I'm going to work on. So let's see. Let me see if I can... I'm just making sure I got it working so well. Okay, I think I got it. I'm gonna try it. Ready? We'll see how this goes. would help if the volume was on. Okay, let's see. The world drained out all of your color. Do you find only that which you seek? Cause I see it too, just different than you. But I see it too. What do you hear with your ears, baby? Does the universe whisper a lie? Does bird song get muffled by silence? Does her laughter come off as a cry? Cause I hear it too, just different than you. But I hear it too. What do you feel in your mind, baby? Do you think you are lost and alone? Does all that you touch turn to sharpness when you sense that you don't have a home? Cause I feel it too, just different than you, but I feel it too. Thank you. 
I pray that I meet you in heaven when both of our blinders are done. And I hope it turns out we were singing two harmonies of the same song. <laughs> that kind of worked. Um, actually, I don't think it really will work. So it's sad because there's a bridge. But maybe I'll have to just keep working on it and revamping it. But that is a song I wrote called I See It Too. And I wrote it um, for a project with Alan Sparhop called The Murder of Crows. Um, we worked together, for, and we still do whenever we can, um, to do that. But right as I started writing songs, I was playing with him a lot. Um, and that's one of the earlier ones. Um, but it ended up on my most recent album, full-length album, I should say, um, Learning How to Stay, and he played guitar on that. But it is one of those tunes that you kind of need a guitar. But it's fun anyways, so thank you for trying, working on it. Um, oh, my sister, Corey, is on there. That's pretty awesome. Um, and thank you for being guinea pigs with me. I think that is pretty cool. Um, so, as I asked before the song, what are people going to do this winter to stay busy? Um, Bartek said he is taking up embroidery. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and continuing to paint because he's been really painting a lot of beautiful stuff. Um, quarantine, Zach is saying that he took on piano, I believe. That's what I think it said up there. That's awesome. Um, and so um, Crystal is saying that she moved to Massachusetts in a little village. Oh, that sounds cool. And she's getting into nature and into the woods. Um, so, yeah, basically I'm thinking for us, I got to get a better snowsuit or something so that we can be outside more. That's another thing I think um, that I want to do. So get outside more during the winter. Um, so I thought I would do a couple more tunes, but as I'm playing this next one, um, thanks for putting up with my guinea pig on the first tune. Um, I'm gonna do I Wait For You right now, but as I play that, if you have any ideas of improvisations that I can do, I would love to improv for you. Um, basically for those, you just kind of think of a vision like a visual in your mind, and then I will play the sound equivalent of that um, if it works out, like if I can think of something cool to play with that. So um, give me an improv prompt during I Wait, um, and I'll dedicate this one to Chris, even though uh, he did not ask for it, but um, it is one that I know Chris enjoys. So here we go. This is um, I Wait. And I'm going to say hi to my nephew, Calvin, before I start, in case he's still there. Hi, Calvin, and hi, Corey. That's pretty exciting that Calvin's on watching. I got to see him last night on my patio with a face mask on far away, but it was still awesome because I got to watch them run. They, My nephews are, I believe, Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, six and seven or seven and five. I don't remember how old, Calvin, that you are right now, but... They're into running a lot, so I timed them running across the giant lawn of our apartment complex. And they both did it in about a minute, which was pretty impressive. I do not exercise for the heck of it like that, so it's pretty cool. So anyways, here we go. This is I Wait.
back here. I've been waiting. I've been waiting in line. Been a long time. Can't get no service. Still I'm hoping. I am hoping for a time. That one day things will change. And we can finally take our place. That history won't forget us. Or judge him. Um, it's a song I wrote about the disability rights movement in America and how we need to have a seat at the table in all discussions. And I think that's really becoming clear um, during the election cycle that's happening is um, it's starting to be mentioned and considered disability rights, but it's not in the same vein um, as all the civil rights. We need to like really integrate it into all the areas of public life. And so hopefully, with every passing election, that can be done more um, and more. So um, that is I Wait. Apparently, Calvin is six, and I should have known that because he had a birthday in August. So that is quite silly of me to not remember that. So six and seven, they are closer in age than I thought. That's what is throwing me off, is I think of them as two years apart. But I guess there is a while in there. Like my little brother. I have a little brother. He's 18 months younger than me. For a little while, we're only a year apart. Um, similar vibes. So that is I Wait. I'm wondering if anyone has any um, any idea for an improvisation. Um, if Calvin has one, Corey, definitely let me know what it would be um, if he wants me to play. I don't know Paw Patrol very well. I'm sure there are other shows. Wild Kratz. I don't know it very well, but I might be able to improv some animals. Any requests? This is the time. Um, trying to think of what else is going on this week. Um, I am just going to keep working, I guess, keep writing. Um, I'm going to start um, an essay for a blog about kind of being an artist during quarantine, um, kind of how you keep going. And um, just kind of working on some creative stuff this week. I haven't attempted to rebottle my mead. I explained last time, I think, how I exploded mead all over our kitchen, uh, like a geyser that shot up. And so I haven't, I'm waiting. I have a bunch that I will bottle eventually, but I'm so nervous now to explode them all over my kitchen that I think I'm going to wait even longer than it says to wait. Um, so that'll be a little bit 
that'll take a while. And um, well, nice to see you, Amir. Bunch of different people are logging on. So, um, and Mandandra, I believe, is how you would say that. So, um, thank you so much, Chris. I am glad that you're enjoying the vocals. I really love to sing. I'm glad that that's something that I've been able to keep doing in quarantine for sure. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any other requests, uh, maybe I'll do another song and I'll end on an improv. So, everyone want to think of an improv request during this one. This song, um, oh, Corey did it. My nephew is asking for a lightsaber battle. Ooh. Okay. I think I can make that work. I'm going to do my song first, and then I'm going to do lightsaber battles. They're really into Star Wars, um, which is understandable because it's awesome. So I'm going to do lightsaber battles. But first, I'm going to do bird song because this was requested last week. And as I said with the captioner, I kind of need to send her the lyrics ahead of time. So it's better to request songs a week ahead at least at this point, we're trying to kind of tweak, like, you know, work on the system and make it even more user friendly. But right now, um, I got this request last week and I promised I would do it today. So I'm going to do bird song. Many of you have been to my shows before, but in case you haven't, um, this is a duet. And so um, what's going to happen is I'm going to set up the loop and we're going to come in together and we're going to sing this line twice. We're going to sing bird. Why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wing. So the words are bird, why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wings. And that is the part we're going to sing together all the way through the song. I know many of you have sung this with me before, but in case you haven't, um, this song is about disability in a way of like, when I started performing music, I was wondering if there would be a ceiling as to how far I could go um, because of the way people perceive disability. And I think the verdict is still out to some extent, but I think the whole point of the song is that it doesn't really matter um, if it brings you joy, you should do it anyways. So that's um, no matter how constricted you feel by society, that your spirit is always free. And so that's what bird song is about. Um, I think we all feel constricted sometimes in different ways and just remembering that your spirit is never um, captive to anything is uh, something that has helped me a lot throughout the years. Um, so I am going to, let's practice it once just in case you've never done this with me before and then I'm going to set up the loop and then we'll come in together, sing it twice and then you're going to keep going. So for the, the rehearsal, ready, we'll do it together. Bird, why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wing. Perfect. So you should sing at home. And yes, Chris, you obviously should sing along. That is what I'm hoping um, that you will do because I do um, really like knowing, even if I can't hear you, that you're singing with me. I think that's pretty fun. So um, this is bird song. I'm going to set up the loop. We'll come in together. And then after that, I'm going to transition to the improv song of the day, which is lightsabers battles. So here we go. Thank you. 
go. Um, that is bird song. Um, so Tina asked where I came up with bird song and its name. When I kind of explained earlier the the idea about disability, but I came up with it. My, I mean, not in the bathtub, which is my usual spot, but I came up that as I was taking a nap one day. I was really tired, and I laid down in the middle of the afternoon, and then it just popped into my head, so much so that I couldn't actually sleep. So I just got up and wrote it so that I wouldn't forget it and that I could go to sleep finally. Um, but I don't think I actually ended up taking a nap that day because I was excited by this new song. Um, and the name is just kind of... Um, bird song is just sort of you know like the song of the bird i felt like it fit uh the vibe of what i was going for i'm not sure if i saw any birds behind me while i was playing that one there have been all day and then during bird song they decided to take a break i guess um so i have one more song for you today um this is the lightsaber battle as requested by calvin my nephew. Um, so I am a big Star Wars fan, but I don't know if I, I mean, I'm in it more for, you know, the Ewoks and Yoda. So the lightsabers, I'm curious if I'll be able to really capture it. I'm going to do my very best. So this is a lightsaber, lightsaber battle. And, um, and then we can say hello and head out. Um, and I'll be back next Sunday. As you know, every week I've committed to doing captioning. Um, so p things like my Patreon um, are supporting that because it does add a pretty significant cost to these shows. But it's worth it in the end. I think all, I think things like YouTube should just have captioning that's, that works with music, but it doesn't. And so um, with live performances, you really do need a person captioning um, which is good. It's fun because Eric is really nice. She's a lady that does our captions every week. Um, but I think that is a big deal and I would like to see more artists do it. So I'm happy to do it. So if you want to support captions, um, consider joining my Patreon or leaving a tip. Um, that is something um, that helps keep me going, especially um, in the winter when I'm hoping to just be writing things like Patreon and these shows are going to basically be my whole income, but it will be worth it because I am excited to have a book to share with the world about disability pride and disability culture and the importance of accessibility in the arts, which is all things I am planning to write about during my book. Um, oh, somebody wrote, when our minds are at rest, we do our best, I think. That's true, actually. Um, I think every time I've thought of a song, it's when I'm relaxed. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So both boys are ready with their lightsabers. That makes me super happy. So um, I am going to start now so that they, maybe they can act out a lightsaber battle while I play. So let's see how it goes. Um, okay, sweet, here we go. My mom is there. She said, I believe it's pronounced lightsaver. Perhaps that is how they say it. So here we go.
Okay, so this is lightsaber battle. <laughs> that was, um, I'm hoping that that captured the right vibe for Sully and Calvin and all of you in the audience. It's pretty fun to, um, to be working on improv pieces and let your imagination go wild. I don't know if you could tell, but the lower voice... <laughs> That was Darth Vader, and then this was Luke. That was Luke. So they were different octaves. That's how I envisioned it in my mind. Um, so <laughs> hopefully they understood the battle, and I think Darth Vader died at the end. I'm sorry. I hope that's okay. Or at least was wounded. You know, he's out of the picture now. So that's what happened during the lightsaber battle. Thank you so much. Um, for joining me. Um, Bartek asked if I play on my five string these days. Not in the last couple of weeks, but that's one of the things that I really want to do this winter. And I actually have a song that I started writing yesterday, and I hear a harp on it, and I do have a little lap harp, and I suck at it, basically, to be honest. So eventually I want to work on that too, because I think I could come up with a simple harp part to add to that one. So there will be more things coming your way this winter. Hopefully some more special guests. I'm working with a guy named Jeremy Yulvisaker from Minneapolis, who's amazing, and I'm hoping he'll join me next week. Um, so anytime I have a guest on, I split all the tips with them, just so you know. And so I hope he'll be with me next week. He's a really amazing guitarist. Um, super, super creative. He would be into making a lightsaber battle, um, for example, or any kind of battle. I think he would do a good job on guitar. Um, so I am so grateful that you were here with me. I will be back next Sunday, same time, 2 p.m. Central, uh, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. British time. Um, I really, really am grateful for all of you to being here, and I really hope to see you next week. Thank you so much. And take very, very good care of yourselves. I'll bring out the five strings sometime soon. Dark versus light. That's what Corey said. That's what the battle was. between. Did I wonder if Sully and Calvin were actually battling during the song. That's what I want to know. So anyways, talk to you all soon. Take care. Have a wonderful week.
Well, hold on. This is the part where Paul has to hand me my computer. <laughs> it ends the same every week with a close-up of my forehead. Bye, guys. Take care.